Good morning, guys. It's time for my second cup. And today on the channel, you're gonna see this. We're gonna review that. And if you're somebody new getting into FPV, this is gonna be a great video because guess what? We're not gonna do a bunch of flashy stuff on this video. We're not gonna do a bunch of music cuts and uh, really fast moving images or anything like that. It's just gonna be straight up you and me hanging out and uh, learning how to fly this quad out of the box. And um, you're gonna learn something today on the channel. Hopefully if you're brand new, this is a great spot to be because this is coming up on our 10th year on the channel. So 10 years of flying drones together on the Drone Camps RC channel. And uh, now we're in this beautiful new house our chicken coop is almost built. I'll show you that project sometime. We've got all kinds of crazy stuff going on back there. Uh, it's hard to see from the back door, but it's 30 degrees out this morning and uh, I'm staying in here where it's warm and where I've got hot coffee. But we're gonna hang out today and we wanna put this video on and just kind of kick back and relax and learn how to fly a drone or just kind of see a, you know, a, a kind of a laid back review of the Aquila 16. I don't even know if I said that right. Um, this would be a great video. So it looks cool. It looks like a little mini Avada kind of. And the ELRS controller. Looks like a, a modified version of the previous goggles we've already seen. And we'll get into this a little more on the bench, but. I'm gonna unbox it for you. I'm gonna show you what is included in this box, what you get, and uh, we'll fly it together as well. Hopefully inside and outside today. As long as I don't break it inside, right? <laughs> and uh, without further ado, as always, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Okay, cool guys, here we go. Let's go ahead and let me show you what's inside the box here. Let's just go ahead and take it out and if you don't want to see this part you can fast forward to the flying part that's going to come up in the next part of this video but for now we're going to check out what beta fpv is offering us in this kit so first thing we got is the case looks like kind of like a nice cloth exterior with pretty standard zipper it has a little handle on the top it has a rubberized zipper pull here so we're just going to open this up and just inside the box, first time I'm opening it, so you're seeing it with me the first time. I've got an instruction kit right here, starter guide, everything in the box there. I've got the light radio transmitter. This is the 3.0 ELRS. So ELRS is gonna give you a little bit better connection to the quad and a little further range. If you're brand new to FPV, that's good to know. So ELRS, it also works with FPV simulators. You can use an FPV simulator on this radio. So that's pretty cool. You can also bind this to other drones, um, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. Uh, ELRS can sometimes be a challenge for people in this hobby to, to bind up to. So under here, looks like the quad itself. It's actually lighter than I thought. It looks heavy and like, it looks heavy in person. We're gonna weigh this on the scale coming up too. So the difference between this one and something like the Cetus X, uh, the Cetus Pro, like you guys have seen, on this channel i reviewed those earlier this one is a 1s quad but it has two different style batteries and it has inverted motors all the cetus series quads uh, i believe have upward facing motors and the downward facing motors for in indoor flying it's just it flies a little better it actually flies a lot better more stable and it has no interruption for the airflow underneath the quad so that makes it super stable and you get a lot less turbulence underneath this frame so uh, if the frame is in the way of the motors and the the motors are on top of the frame that's where it creates more turbulence uh, and you know you can learn more about that on this channel as you as you watch it but we also have something very interesting on here that beta fpv had implemented before it's the optical flow on the bottom of this quad it helps it with ultimate like stability it just kind of hangs out in one spot in your living room and it will it's almost like gps position hold 
without GPS on board. Um, it's pretty cool. So if you're you're brand new to FPV, you'll, you'll learn more about optical flow as you're learning about drones in general. A lot of the higher end drones have optical flow. Some of the toy drones as well. Also in the box, we have another zipper over here in this part. And looks like we have some BT 2.0 connectors, some extra hardware. We've got, oh, plastic bag. Uh, we have one of the batteries here, and it has that BT 2.0 connector on there. Um, it looks like it's gonna be, um, if you wanna use it on one of like the Whoop Store 3, the Whoop Store 3 charger is my favorite charger um, over here on the floor, and I gotta show you this. This is, everything's falling out today. But this is the Whoop Store version 3, and you can use one of these cable leads that come in this pack, plug it into this, and I'll, I'll show you that coming up. But um, otherwise, you're going to have to use the charger that comes in the box with this. And also, USB cable. Looks like for connecting to the flight controller, that's a USB-C. We also have in here the charger itself. So this will plug straight into the charger. And then you're going to plug this into the wall. And you probably have to use one of your leads. Actually, you might be able to just go right from the side. No, it does not reach there. So you will have to use one of the, the leads that came in there. The lead is, is essentially a wire that comes from the battery to the charger. If you don't know what a lead is, now you know. And we also have this USB-C cable, which I'm assuming is to charge the goggles and the radio itself. So on the radio, you have USB-C port on the bottom. And you have a link button as well somewhere on this radio. And we have like three different flight modes on here, normal, um, normal M and S mode, like sport mode. And normal will give you that stability. So we have two batteries in the box, which is also awesome. We have a support card with QR codes. And what else do we have in here? Other oh, goodies. So if you're looking for like the all-in-one kit, this is gonna probably be one of the easiest options for this year and and we'll see if it it makes like you know fpv uh kit of the year uh, by the end of the year a lot of times on this channel what i do is i like to have a quad of the year uh we also this year we did a whoop of the year um that was the the uh, newbie drone uh acro b 75 hd version so that's like a dji 3 quad under 100 grams i i got mine down to around 56 grams which is kind of crazy uh so these are the goggles. Um, they also have DVR support on here, and it looks like I'm gonna have to get my strap and hook that up. I will try to use these, but if you're kind of nearsighted like I am, you might need binocular style goggles. Um, binocular style goggles look like these Skyzone 03s, and I use Crown Royal bag for mine. It's great. Um, if you have an empty bottle of Crown Royal and you got a bag, great goggle bag. Um, this is binocular style, so they have two screens on there whereas this goggles only has one. So um, that just for me has a better focal range adjustment and IPD for uh, getting things in focus if you have uh, a need for glasses. And without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, put everything together here. Let's get these batteries charging. I'm gonna charge up these two batteries. They're saying that we're gonna get like eight minutes flight time out of one of these batteries. And these are the 1100 milliamp batteries. It comes stock with the 1100 milliamp. They also make a secondary battery. It's a 650 milliamp. And that'll let you do supposedly, probably mild freestyle. So if you want to learn how to fly acro, this would be a pretty good acro trainer. But uh, yeah, one more thing. Let me go ahead and weigh it for you. Just give you a live weigh in. I promised you a weigh in. So quad only. We're looking at, if it'll sit on there correctly, 46.8 grams quad only. Now with the battery, kind of slides on the back here. Total takeoff weight for this quad would be 73.1 grams. So actually a little bit, quite a bit heavier than my decased 03 version, Acro B75. So that's interesting to see that um, it does uh, fall into the kind of the, the heavier category as far as um, 1S quads go. But let's charge up these batteries and we'll fly all the different flight modes together and I'll show you some DVR footage as well. And maybe you'll learn something about 
getting into the FPV hobby with this video. So let's hang out. Let's do some flying now. Okay, so I have both these batteries charging on the Whoop Store 3, and I used the cables that came in the box. So you have two leads in the box that you can use with any other charger. Um, that is kind of cool because this one will charge quicker. You can do a quick charge on the Whoop Store 3 versus this little guy right here. It's kind of small, um, it's minimal, but you know, for travel, that would be super great. But if you want a nice bench charger, this one also does storage charge. So if you want to bring it back down to 3.8 volt, you can do that with the Whoop Store 1S charger. You cannot storage charge with these types of chargers. Um, they will charge it up to full, but then it's up to you for storage later. If you want to discharge it, um, you have to find another way. You can't do it with this one. So I'm almost full on this one. Right now I'm at 4.18 volts. So I, I want to get it up to 4.2 the LiPo standard maximum charge uh, for a full battery. It should get us about eight minutes flight time. This is still charging, but I think it's good enough. Um, it's been charging for about 30 minutes and both these batteries have almost hit the 30 minute mark. So it looks like it's gonna take about 30 minutes to charge them up, but I'm only charging at 0.8 amp. Um, so you can charge it a little better than that. Since they're 1100 milliamp batteries, you could bring it up to like 1C uh, on, on this Whoop Store charger. You can't change the, the current on this one. So this is pretty much plug and play, and that one is what it is. The goggles themselves, I have a little blue light here, and I also put a 32 gigabyte SD card in here, uh, and that's what we're gonna use to record our DVR, which I'll show you during the flight test. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything on, and uh, we're gonna start the flight test here. It looks like it has a little kind of switch on the side and that turns on the goggles. You'll see the goggles come up there. And at first it's gonna go into like an automatic search mode. It's gonna be looking for your quad. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this one. I can't wait anymore. So I'm at 4.18. Um, and you know, we're just gonna do a little bit of flying with this battery, see how long it lasts um, at this point. So it's pretty much 90% charged. And first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the radio first. Press and hold once and then press again, similar to DJI. So I'm gonna take this battery, I'm gonna line up the flat side with the flat side, push it in, and it should snap into place. It's kind of an awkward way to plug in a battery from the back here. And am I even doing this right? Okay, snaps in the front first maybe. This is interesting. Okay, there we go. It took a second to do that. So there's the LED lights, they're flashing. Now when you get onto the channel that it's actually on, you'll see the, the, the signal bar go full up. It'll go all the way up. Okay, so now we are back on the channel. Let's go ahead and press record again. And if you let this quad sit too long, the VTX will start overheating uh, the video transmitter and you'll see the OSD start to get a little bit choppy. So let's go ahead and take off. So I'm going to go ahead and arm the quad now and it's going to come up and I'm going to get over top of the wood floor and let's just kind of see if this will hover in place. I'm like down past like half throttle for, for a hover. I mean, that's a pretty good hover. Now let's just kind of fly away from the bar a little bit, turn around and face ourselves. And let's see if it'll kind of hold its position. A little too much throttle, just bring it down a little bit. Nice. That's not doing too bad. Maybe the optical flow will be a little bit better, but if I let, if I push forward and I let go of the stick, it should come to a stop with the optical flow. So this is in mode which is like normal mode. I'm just go full stick forward there. And right now I'm in slow mode. So you're just kind of seeing it the way it is. Oh, I did not see that chicken. Forgot he was there. So this is what you can expect for normal mode in slow mode. Let's go ahead and this right stick closest to you, this switch should flip it into mid mode. So now I can fly a little bit faster here. 
This feels pretty flowy. The tune feels pretty good on here. Wow, that chicken is like reminding me. Oh, it's way faster. All right, so first crash. Let's go ahead and put it in fast mode. Why not? And let's rearm and come up. And I'm still in normal mode, so this thing, you know, it should like, it should uh, have some type of hover hole, but maybe not in fast mode. So in fast mode, it almost seems like it, this almost feels like acro inside. So that's kind of cool. And acro, if you know, like, if you don't know, it's just without stabilization at all. We'll fly that outdoors. That'll be manual mode. So that'll be your like M, M mode. So now we're in uh, fast mode. Let's go ahead and switch back to slow mode and I'll show you the difference. So it looks like it's getting kind of low on the battery. I don't know why. We haven't been flying that long. But we can run this battery down a little further. Okay, let me go ahead and switch into... Now we're in S mode. So now you hear like a big difference in the motors. Like now we have like a lot more power into the motors. So it seems like they have a kind of a throttle, a minimum throttle set for normal mode, which is good. That's gonna save your battery. So if you're kind of cruising around the house, you wanna get the longest flight time, you can fly it in that kind of in mode. This one for me, as, as an experienced pilot, this one feels better than in mode for me. I feel like in mode is a little bit like driving with someone holding the steering wheel for you. Like when you're trying to make a text, you're you're like asking your girlfriend to hold the wheel. Don't text and drive. So quite a bit more power here and I'm gonna try to now like mid mode here for S mode. And see the yaw is a lot faster as well. Way faster through the house. Let's go ahead and try fast mode. Oh wow, that's great. So M mode or S mode with uh, fast is really, feels a lot more like the, the regular bind and fly whoops. I have a lot more agility now. That's freaking awesome. So see how you can go from kind of like mild to wild with this quad. She's cooking now. And you'll get better as you learn how to fly this quad. I always suggest starting out like, you want to start out flying line of sight first with this quad and then move into the FPV goggles. So you'll just be a much better pilot. So now we're in S mode and I probably won't be able to fly M mode inside just because it's a little crazy to do that. But right now I'm in total sport mode or M mode, which is like acro, no stability. But it's actually feels kind of soft. The rates are soft. But we are in slow mode. So this is no stabilization right now in, in slow mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to fast or medium. Let's see that that increases the rates. Now let's go up to fast. So I could totally do a roll right now, but I'll probably crash. There's that chicken. All right, we got five minutes on this battery. I didn't have a full charge, but I think what we should really do now is take the Aquila outside and see how it can flip and roll in this manual mode. So it's doing pretty good. This would be a fun one to take to one of the indoor whoop events. We do have events here in the Pacific Northwest. We have this event called FPV West. It's hosted by drone camps and uh, we go out, meet people, fly outside. And this next event is going to be indoors. So this would be a good one for that event. Whoops and Brews, it's called. All right, let's go ahead and come back to the counter now. And we're going to land. It automatically landed me like right at the end of that battery. And let's see, let me press the record button again, and that should stop our video. So now let's check out our other battery here. We're at 4.17 volt on our outdoor battery. So indoor battery's done. Now let's go outside and fly the outdoor battery. Here we go.
All right, guys, we're outside now. We're going to fly in in mode and slow to start. So let's go ahead and fire up the drone. Remember that left far away from you SA switch is how to arm this quad. So I'm going to goggle up and hopefully the video looks good. Here I come up off the ground. And it's pretty dark on this side of the yard, but let's fly out into the backyard a little further here so we can see what's going on here so the camera to me looks a little bit dark in the goggles we got a little bit of shadows in the backyard let's go ahead now into wow when you switch into s mode it really loses a lot of motor power it just almost dropped to the ground pretty much now i'm using about like half stick to keep it on a hover all right let's go in the darkest part of the yard back here and see how the light adjustment is So some break up at the very back of the yard. I don't even want to go back through the trees back there. This quad has a, a an antenna on, on the inside of the, the drone. So maybe the range is not quite as good as if it's stuck out of the body of the drone. Let's go behind the shed and see if I can make it back there. That's a lot, a lot of times the breakup's really bad back there on analog. But I made it around. That's not too bad. So the camera quality is like, I would say it's okay. Now on a really nice, bright, sunny day, it's going to look pretty good. Now let's go up here a little further. You don't want to fly too far away that you lose this drone. So one of the things that I'm seeing right now is like in my DVR that I can't really tell where the ground is very well. Um, so now I'm in M mode and that's kind of like full acro mode, no stability. Once I get low to the ground, I can see a little better. But it definitely has some, some dark darks in this camera. So this is about as fast as you're going to get going around the yard with full tilt in the camera. And it's definitely doable. So, so far, like... I think my honest opinion about this, this quad so far is that um, the camera looks a little bit dark outdoors. In, in regular light inside, it looked fine. It looked totally fine. It looks like we might be at the end of that battery. It's about 35 degrees outside, so we only got like three minutes flight time out of that battery. And it wasn't fully charged, but it was up to 4.18 volt. So that's almost 4.2 volt full charge. Um, but about three minutes outdoors. So that gives you an idea of how cold it is today. All right, buddies, welcome back into the house now where it's nice and warm. Man, it's cold outside, 30 freaking five degrees outside this morning. And this battery really suffered. It went from literally like uh, around 4.18 volt all the way down to like 2.8 volt. Um, under motor load. So what that means is when the motors are actually flying the quad um, and it's off the ground and it kind of automatically landed itself when it gets down to that low voltage, that's good. It has an automatic land set on this quad so that when you do get down under three volt, it's gonna be like, oh my God, here we go, boom, we're landing um, or else you're gonna kill your battery. So there's this safeguard for new people in this drone that, that kind of helps you not kill these batteries. If you fly LiPos too, far down in the voltage, you can kill a LiPo. Um, you can also make it get super hot and swell. So these are inside these cases. If you feel this kind of over time starting to swell, you wanna probably replace this or re take it somewhere like Batteries Plus and recycle it. Uh, but you wanna look out for that. And you know, if you're brand new to FPV hobby, you have to know like in the winter time, it's kind of hard to fly outside when it is 30 degrees. Um, you're gonna get sometimes maybe 60% of the flight time you'd normally get on a nice warm 70 to 75 degree day. Um, I always say that batteries are a lot like us. So they like to be at a, at a moderate temperature, um, not too hot, not too cold. So if it's in like 95 degrees plus, you'll also see less flight time. So that's kind of important to know. Winter, the dead of winter and the, the, the heat of the summer, um, you're gonna get the least amount of flight time. So the best time of a lot of times to fly is like early fall, springtime, a lot of people get back into the hobby. Um, and now since it's cold outside, 
we have this thing we call whoop season and that is something that we do in the winter but i like the way this feels it feels almost like a dji mavic 3 case it feels like kind of like eggshell thin and i can tell that they produce this plastic extra thin on the bottom of this quad you can see that optical flow there and you can also see a port there on the bottom and i'm assuming that's for possibly usb to hook up to it does not have any uh, spot on here for a usb cable um, which tells me that you can't hook this one up to Betaflight um, unless there is some kind of converter to do that we've got that bt 2.0 connector back here in the very back that the battery slides and locks into and honestly that took me a couple times getting it correct correctly lined up um, to be able to slide and lock it into place but once it's locked into place it doesn't feel like it's going to come apart because it has a lock here has a clip here and it has one up front um, the camera seems to have plenty of protection for the new guys it's also light enough that you're probably not going to have any type of structural damage on it if you do crash it should bounce off things so the lighter they are the, a lot, the less damage sometimes you'll do. It just depends on what you hit. Um, and don't crash it into your kitchen sink because uh, it does not play well with water. But I felt like the power system on here too was good because this quad, I mean, it actually has 1102 motors on here with tri-blade props. And for, for freestyle, once you start doing flips and rolls, I think this is going to be fine to do flips and rolls. I don't think this is going to do power loops around things um, and you know fly out and do loops uh, I just don't feel like it's going to really do big big giant big air maneuvers so you wanted to go with something like a micro brushless um, to, to fly a lot of acro freestyle stuff uh, I don't really feel like this is going to be a freestyle drone honestly but if I were you I would definitely look to if you already bought this one you want to you want to try to upgrade your charger from something like this you know, you can charge both the batteries that came with it in the box, but to be able to charge six at once right here and be able to speed up the process by bringing it up to one C, you'll be able to charge it quite a bit faster and you can balance charge these 1S batteries for storage uh, or storage charge them, which is freaking great. Um, I did feel like plugging in the battery was a little bit finicky again, um, but unplugging it was kind of cool too because once you have it plugged in, you can kind of put your fingers on the side right here and push back and disconnect the battery. Uh, the goggles themselves also feel a little bit nicer than the previous versions from Beta FPV. It has this nice sort of soft feel on the outside of this plastic. I've seen this before. It has this metal top buckle right here, which is kind of a nice addition. And if you want to record DVR this one has DVR as well so 32 gigabyte card in there and soft faceplate here I feel like this part is a little bit sharp right here if I was to be totally honest so that was kind of wearing on my nose I kind of wish this pad went down and under right here and there was a little more padding for the bridge of my nose because this you can hear it just hear that listen to it. it's it's a little bit sharp um, but I was able to see in these goggles and being nearsighted that's that's really important one other thing i noticed was that this antenna was a little bit loose it does tilt back out of the way for storage uh, but you're gonna have to tighten up this little wheel right here and make sure that your antenna is nice and tight because i was getting some problems with distance and range on my um, my vtx and connection to the goggles until i tighten this up so look out for that as well we have a USB-C cable here for charging i believe um, it's a 1s internal battery I think the charger in here as well, C, and it's around a 1,000 milliamp battery in the Light Radio 3 here. So, um, and also ELRS is a nice upgrade to this. And you can use this with FPV simulators, which is super great. So I feel like we have a great power system on here. It's, it's pretty light for having and carrying an 1,100 milliamp battery. It's amazing to me that they actually made an 1,100 milliamp battery this small because normally 1,100 milliamp batteries are three times that size. Um, so that's kind of cool to see this tiny little 1100 milliamp battery. And again, they make another one. It's a 650 milliamp. If you want to try to do freestyle, it's going to probably give you about three to four minutes flight time versus uh, an eight minute up to an eight minute flight time with this one. But again, if you're ripping freestyle, you're probably going to get in a two and a half to three minute range. Uh, I also like the fact that for like you new guys, we have optical flow on here. Um, that optical flow 
worked better than previous versions of this optical flow that I've seen beta FPV do in the past. Like they did this on the Cetus series and they sent me like a little tiny, um, super tiny version of it. I think it was the 16 again, like it flew terrible. Um, and I couldn't even get it out into the other modes and it was one of the prototypes. Um, but that was, that was about two years ago and now we're far long enough in this uh, version of this that it's working properly now. So that's, that's good news for the FPV community. But I also love that, you know, this has better motors on here. Um, the, the, the thing that I wish that they could do is maybe just get a little bit better camera on here. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of this camera outside. It just, it, it had two dark uh, darks. When I was headed toward the trees, everything looked totally black. So I couldn't even see where to go, where to approach my lines. And I've flown in this backyard for, uh, for years and, you know, uh, not being able to spot my line underneath the shadow of a tree, that's super important for an FPV camera. So I feel like the camera could be better. I'm not a fan of this camera that's on here. Bright sunny days when you're out in a big soccer field and there's not a lot of shadows, it'd be completely fine. But if you have a, a backyard with a lot of shadows, um, I expected a little bit better out of this camera. Um, but everything else on here, seem to be better. Um, one other suggestion that I would probably have for beta FPV is maybe having the FPV antenna stick up out of here uh, off the quad because I feel like we would get a better range out of this. Having it embedded inside the quad body um, is probably prohibitive for uh, like a more longer range type of flight. Um, but it did survive also a little bit of wet grass today as well, which is good news. But I'm happy we have ELRS, a little nicer goggles here, and I think for $249, it's a it's not a bad starter kit. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's the best starter kit out there. Um, I didn't even name this video that because I'm not even questioning that because I don't think it's the best starter kit. Uh, anybody else who reviewed this quad who says it's the best starter kit right now is absolutely full of SHIT. Um, they're, they're lying to you. Uh, cause there, there are some better stuff out there and I'll, I'll put some, I'll put my top three best ready to fly starter kits for late 2023. So if you're looking for one for Christmas coming up, I'll try to put a link down below. That'll actually be something that will 100% win you over. Um, and that's, you know, that's what we want to do when you're getting into the FPV hobby as a new person, you don't want to have struggles. Um, you know, you don't want to have things about a particular quad that you, you just hate. Um, and I don't hate that camera. I just don't like it. Um, so uh, uh, it could be better. And, and you know, that's the, that's the real honest drone truth in, in this video. So um, the camera could be better. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to doing some more videos with this on different daily scenarios and uh, some more flying with this Aquila 16. So um, yeah, hang out and stay tuned. I will bring you some more test footage of this one and some more honest reviews, guys. I appreciate you subscribing and hanging out with me and uh, just having some fun with this one today. Hopefully you learned a little something in this video. And if you want to pick up a better charger again, get the VFly Whoop Store 3 for your 1S batteries. The only 1S charger out there that will actually do a storage charge is freaking awesome. And it has a little display screen uh, and you can change it to a quick charge or a slow charge. Pretty cool. Up to six batteries at once. That's my jam. But I appreciate you guys for hanging out. And uh, I will see you on the next one, guys. Take care.